sometimes you make a mistake. You release a product with the best intentions, but it happens just to be not the greatest path to go down on. But the important thing for a company is to realize you did something bad, rethink your strategy and come up with something that will rectify your previous mistake. This is the Arctic Freezer Rectifier 36, Arctic's newest addition to their air cooler lineup. Now with fewer microaggressions, and brand new micro improvements resulting in some pretty serious gains in performance. The Arctic Freezer, not Liquid Freezer, the Arctic Regular Freezer lineup has come a very long way and for the longest time the Arctic Freezer 34, especially the eSports Duo, was one of the best bang for the buck coolers you could get. Unfortunately in 2022 somebody at Arctic decided that it was time to annoy the hell out of every living turtle and they added a hell lot of plastic. The Freezer 35 was less than interesting. Sure, it was quiet, that thing was really quiet, but somebody thought it would be a smart move to divide the line into separate Intel and AMD models, which basically cut the reusability of the cooler in half. Needless to say, I wasn't extremely happy with that choice, not to mention that removing the plastic shroud of a Freezer 35 felt like a hemispherectomy. But let's not keep the grudge, cause for the Freezer 36, somebody learned how to do things the right way. There are five different versions of the Freezer 36. The regular one featuring two P12s and a silver heatsink, a CO version featuring the P12 fans meant for constant operation with a dual ball bearing, a black and white ARGB version and this this all black Freezer 36. Black, yeah, it, it's called black. For the most part, the performance across all of these should be somewhat the same. The only possible difference I can see would be between the ARGB versions and the non ARGB versions, because the P12 ARGB or the P12 ARGB fan lineup is performing slightly differently, so variations can happen there. But for this video, we will solely focus on the Freezer 36 Black, the all black one with that beautiful matte black plate at the top. And before anybody starts wondering, for myself, the whole Freezer 35 line was kind of a mistake, and you don't even need to have two working eyes to see that the new Freezer 36 has much more in common with the old Freezer 34 than the Freezer than the Freezer 35. So for the purpose of this video I will keep comparing the new Freezer 36 to the old old Freezer 34. Out of the box we get pretty much what you would expect. Installation material for all nowadays relevant sockets, some thermal paste and some extra stuff which you may need cause this one also comes with that contact frame like anything else Arctic has released this year. Now I've already talked about this topic in the liquid freezer review and I am okay with this but I still kind of fear for the potential group of people doing this as their very first build. I can't see where this can go wrong. And of course, even if AM4 and AM5 are supported by default, for Intel it's LGA1700 only. And I double checked this, cause yes, the contact frame for the Freezer 36 is in fact not the identical one that the Arctic ships with the liquid freezer line. The IHS or the hole for the IHS is a little bit smaller and it doesn't in fact say anything about the future socket. This is LGA1700 only. Now I am sure that Arctic will ship the Freezer 36 out with an updated one once a new CPU hits the market, but it's worth mentioning that if you somehow get the old one you will need to contact Arctic for a replacement and yeah, issues may arise. But let's talk about the cooler, cause there is a lot. At a first glance, the Freezer 36 has somewhat the same features as a Freezer 34 Duo. We still have four heat pipes, a direct touch copper base and two fans. But with the Freezer 36, it's less about reinventing the wheel and more about micro-optimizations, not microaggressions. Like the heat pipes, they may be identically thick and the same applies to the base, but if you look closely, the heat pipes that are bent to be moving towards the central part of the heatsink are now pushed much more outwards. The next small changes are on the heatsink side. The heatsink is now 2mm higher at 159mm and the same thing happened at the width where we are now at 126mm. But the biggest win came in thickness because where we previously had a rather small heatsink at 49mm we now got a 53.5mm thick one. So that, that is 
a big difference. So overall, we are looking at some serious gains in heatsink real estate. And what's important to note is that the additional thickness does not mean that the right fan will be protruding above the RAM. So we are still talking about a 100% RAM compatible cooler, which will be very important in a minute. One thing that did not change is the heatsink density. We counted the same 14 FPI on both the Freezer 34 and Freezer 36. And to my very surprise, they are identically dense, which uh, to the eye, it doesn't look like it. It looks much, much denser, but that may be an optical illusion to some degree because now we got open sides. Where previously the Arctic Freezer 34 had closed off sides, now they advertise this as an enhancement because the fan that is pulling air through the heatsink can pull them also from, let's say, the sides, adding more air. If that helps, yeah. The other approach may create like a close-off loop, which is basically what Be Quiet has been advertising for the last decade, but it's a change. But let's talk about the fans, because Arctic did something really great here. By default, we got two of Arctic's P12 PVM PSTs mounted to the Freezer 36, so both fans are spinning at up to 1800 RPM and pushing up to 56.3 CFM at up to 2.2 millimeters of H2O. Both are ending in a PVM cable coming out with an additional splitter so you can connect everything to a single header. And, and yes, I said both of them because in the end you will end up with one additional splitter where you don't know what to do with it because there is no location for a third fan, but okay. These fans are great. They have been doing a great job in the past decade. Everything good. Now what I'm talking about is how everything is mounted. For quite some time, a lot of companies have tried to get rid of fan clips for whatever reason. Be Quiet got the Plastic Cage of 3000, Arctic had the Turtle Destroyer, Deepcool had the Minecraft block. Nobody likes fan clips, for, apparently. But this time, they didn't do an oopsie. On the heatsink, Arctic has these rails, which are plastic. Yeah, that they are plastic, that, that's true, but stay with me here. And these rails have these holes at the top and bottom. And on the fan side, we got these very special screw-like things pre-mounted, which got like a tiny little indentation on the fan side. And now, how these screws work, and now how these screws work is that you in fact just position the screw on the holes and then you just pop them on. And in fact the whole mechanism is strong enough that I can... Yeah, th this... I trust this. And the reason I find this method so cool is because you can't see it on the outside. It is invisible, but most importantly the holes and the screws and everything are located based on the 120mm standard because in fact, the, the, the fan 120mm standard is not based on the outside of the fan, it is based on the screw hole location. So, you can take whatever 120mm fan you want and just move the screws over to another fan and then keep using the heatsink or swap for other Arctic fans or swap for Noctua, swap for whatever you want. And this is so important because if the fan dies, if you want to upgrade your fans, if you are just sick of the color and you want to switch it up, you got the ability to do so. Whereas with the Freezer 35, you were pretty much stuck because half of that devilish thing was one giant piece of plastic. Really, really cool approach. It is upgradable and it is just usability at its finest. Keep going like that. And now let's move on to installation. On AM5, it is a easy thing. Remove the pre-installed retention brackets, slap the black spacers on top of the leftover knobs, put the two new retention brackets on top, try not to have a brain hemorrhage whilst doing it, because the one marked with L is supposed to be on the left side and R on the right, and screw them down. Over on Intel, it's a bit of a different story. Please don't do this inside of a case. Take your motherboard, put it onto a carton box, make sure that the CPU is installed and the locking mechanism is open. Yes, I know, Arctic says you can glue the retention bracket to the motherboard as if you were trying to save a wounded animal, but save yourself the trouble. Do it outside on the box. Remove the four torque screws around the socket using the included tool. Open the retention mechanism as you are keeping the CPU in place and remove both brackets individually. After that, position the new contact frame and screw it down using the included screws. From here on both sockets, slap some of that thermal paste on top, add the heatsink, screw it down and clip the fan back in place. 
just like it was for the liquid freezer, it's, it's not that hard. Just be careful on Intel. A lot can go wrong and better do it slowly than be sorry later on. And with that out of the way, let's finally get to benchmarks, cause we got something worth showing. We test all of our coolers on our 3900K test bench with three workloads, 120, 250 and 320 watts. Apart from the 100% fan burst test, we gradually lower the fan speed and note down the noise at every step, creating a noise to performance curve. And at 120 watts going through the socket, the Freezer 36 shines like a damn star. At 33.8 degrees C above ambient, it performs pretty much like a Nokia NHU12A or a NHD15, which is a hell of a position to be in. Given that this is the most gaming-like workload and this will also be the most appropriate use case for this cooler, it is sitting in an excellent spot. And even more so if we compare it to some previous generation Arctic coolers like the Freezer 34 eSports Duo which was outperformed pretty heavily. And so was the much bigger Arctic Freezer 50. Now you may ask yourself why the Freezer 35 is not on the list and that's because our unit is a A35 model as an AMD and we are now benchmarking on Intel which sucks for us, but that's pretty much the downside that the Freezer 35 line came with. But I still wanted to know, and I also wanted to know how the new line is performing on AMD. So I quickly built a test bench featuring a 7600X locked to 5.5 GHz at 1.35 V core, pushing 106 through the socket, everything locked down as tight as I can so that we don't get into the 95 degrees C issue. And here we can see that the Freezer 35 really sucked on AM5. It was already outperformed by the Freezer 34 eSports Duo by 5 degrees, which, which is just horrible, but the Freezer 36, the, the one we are actually talking about, that's a different thing. At 60.6 .6 degrees C, we actually have a positive difference now. As a small addition, I also set all the fans to be running at a fixed 15 RPM, so that we can normalize every cooler to, to some degree because everybody is spinning at a different fan speed. And on here, the ratio looks pretty much the same. At 63.3 degrees, the new Freezer 36 is definitely the winner out of the three. And no clue why the Freezer 35 is so bad on AM5, but that's how it is. It's, it's funny, because in the original review, the Freezer A35 was already running 3 degrees behind the Freezer 34 Duo. And now it has just gotten worse. Seems like the A35 performs worse on AM5 than it did on AM4 in relation to the Freezer 34. But back to our new Intel based test bench and some noise to performance. As the Freezer 36 already starts at a much better spot than the Freezer 34 and it features much less noisy fans, this has to be a slam dunk and it is. From start to finish, the Freezer 36 is either significantly quieter or significantly cooler than the old Freezer 34. Actually, it is much more comparable to a Nokia NHD15. Not quite the thermal right Phantom Spirit, that thing is just a monster, but, but still in a very good position for gaming type workloads. But what about working? What happens if we start pushing to 50 watts to the socket? Well, it still keeps up. At 65.7 degrees C above ambient, it is still sitting in a very strong position, just a bit in front of the Nokia NHU12A and still standing strong compared to the previous generation. Ignoring whatever happened here, compared to bigger coolers like the Nokia NHD15, we start seeing that size does matter or size does make a difference. On the noise to performance graph for 250 watts, I was pretty shocked that this thing kept going for so long. Actually at max fan speed, it still outperformed the Nokia NHD15 for a split second because those P12s aren't that loud to begin with. And shortly after, it pretty much performed like the Nokia NHU12A, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Unsurprisingly, at 320 watts, it was game over. Even at max fan speed, there is nothing that can keep the CPU from bursting into flames. Performance-wise, I am impressed. Usually, direct touch coolers perform exceptionally well at low workloads, cause this way of doing things is is very efficient at getting heat away from the base and into the heatsink. 
The thing is, they also tend to get saturated very quickly, which is why we see so many coolers fall behind or even off the benchmark chart once we turn the heat up to 250 watts. But not the Freezer 36, at least not yet. It kept going, it's, it's like the micro improvements managed to increase the maximum thermal capacity so that the cooler can withstand that level of heat. Of course there is a maximum to everything and it's not like this can be used in a 3900K at full power without the CPU just surviving on hopes and dreams. But to my surprise, this cooler is not only a very good gaming level cooler, but this can also be used for all types of working. If you've got a 13700K, a 7700X, 7800X3D and so on, this thing can still be great, even if your primary focus is benchmarking Cinebench as a fetish. So as far as performance goes, Arctic did take what was working and made it better. Very good job and from a performance standpoint alone, absolute recommendation. And I am impressed how far they could push what was working on the Freezer 34. But it's not only that, I do love how these fans are mounted. I do love the fact that you can swap them out without getting a whole new cooler. Just because somebody thought mounting everything to a repurposed Fiat 500 spoiler was a good idea. And multi-socket compatibility. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. And I remember that back then I gave them some credit. Because how it's usually done or how it was done is that in the end everybody will be sitting with a spare set of mounting material for the socket that they haven't used. Which is true to some point but... On the other hand, if you switch platforms because of an upgrade or whatever reason, you can get a whole new cooler, which kind of defeats the purpose of not including anything in the first place. So they've learned and they did great. But what about the price? I was told that the Freezer 36 line will start at $32.99 for the regular one and they will go up to $37.99 if you want to get the all black one that we got here, which in my opinion, is a insanely steep step up for a paint job, but okay. And it goes even higher if you want to have the ARGB version. But if we ignore the lineup differences, 38 euros for a very good gaming and a pretty good working cooler is, is an absolutely amazing price, so no issues there. But there is more, because just like with the liquid freezer, the air freezer also profits from that anniversary promotion. No clue why 23 years of Arctic is so much different than 22, but apparently it is. Because you can get this, or exactly this thing, for 20 euros on their shop. Or Amazon until June. 20 bucks. You can get this cooler for less than a Noctia fan. So as far as we are concerned, Arctic did a great job. I hope to forget whatever this was. They learned from their mistakes, went back to what was good and improved upon it, making the freezer lineup ready for 2024 and the performance requirements set by the new CPU lines. And for us, absolute recommendation. For a standard price of 38 bucks, you will get a perfectly adequate performing air cooler, which, which is among the very best in noise to performance and can keep up to some degree even at higher workloads. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get all of these Fiat 500 spoilers out of the ocean. No idea if Arctic realizes, but if enough of these make it into the Arctic Ocean, the name Greenland will start to make sense. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.